we think it's on Facebook, not Facebook, um, YouTube. We don't know what's going on. So John's in the other room watching. I'm not going to do any video today, although I don't think that had anything to do with it because John said it was staggering and getting weird um, before I even hopped into the video. So anyways, I had a really nice four days of sewing uninterrupted. I got a lot done and it will be to your benefit because it's the next project. And it's real interesting because when I got there with all my tools and my toys and my fabric, I'm like going, oh, I'm not inspired. So it's just like, sit down, start sewing. Let's see what happens. And I love this next quilt. <laughs> It won't be a complete mystery because I've, I've got a lot of it done. It'll probably be a wall hanging, but you know, when you play with me, you can, you know, make it whatever you want, whatever size. So um, the kids, we have that blow up swimming pool in the back with a water slide thing. And it's just horrible to put away. I mean, horrible, poor John. And he had not put it away. And so he called or texted yesterday and said, would you mind if the kids come over tonight? I'm saying, no, no problem. I was so tired. I, I had a big girl drink and they're all, <laughs> they're all eating dinner. <laughs> they're done. I go take a shower. <laughs> I come out in my jammies. <laughs> I said, I'm so tired. So I cleared the room and I was in bed at 7.30. <laughs> Today, I'm still a little at, but when I'm done here, I'm going to go over to Dublin Sewing Center and find out when I hit my machine, why my part fell off on the inside and better yet, why it's still sewed. That's a, that's a mystery to me. <laughs> that machine still sewed. It's Bernina 153. Also, I have to show you something real cool. Sue Rapp, who I've known from my retreats, I've known over 20 years, sent me all these stickers. And this is a great tool for a quilter, a great, great gift. And uh, there's more here that I could possibly use, but then I realized maybe this is why she's sending it to me to help with my COVID brain. Hi, I'm Alex Anderson. <laughs> so, Sue, thank you so much. I so appreciate. Today we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to concentrate on a couple magic numbers and I'm going to get cuckoo about pressing. All right. But first, let's take a look at what you guys have put up on the forum. And I want to be extremely clear that I'm not going through and cherry picking. OK, what I'm doing is I'm going in about an hour before right now, just pulling images, because if I do it yesterday, I won't even remember what perhaps you said, and I still may not remember either, but I just pull them, and it is such a gift to me, and I know if it's a gift to me, it's a gift to you, to be able to see what everybody's doing. So let's go take a look, see if the first one, this is uh, Espel. Okay, so, Espel put this up on her wall and she's assessing it. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it's a female, excuse me, please. And hi, Barbara, let us know if it starts stuttering, okay? So she looked at it and she's doing exactly what I do. She looked at it and she said, I need more reds. Um, in fact, the only red I really see is that uh, big purple pinwheel with red in the background. And that's what you do, you guys, at this point. You have to look and see what do I have too much of? What do I need more of? And go from there. Okay, but then here's more of hers, of Espel's. So now she's got them. Let's start with the bottom. Um, I wish I could flip it, but I didn't. Uh, let's start at the bottom. She's made spaces. And, well, actually, she started, let's start at the top. She's just put up big hunks of the Barassica and then she's pinning her blocks on top of it just to get the look feel of it. And by the way, I am not doing it like this, but I think in just looking at this right now, it would be very interesting to do different blocks of colors with the cave. So in other words, I realize that fabric's not cut into, but isn't that interesting how you could get a gigano secondary pattern going with this? Well, maybe I will do something like that. Who knows? I'm just starting to play with that aspect of it. Then this is um, pines, 
and she saw this block behind me and she couldn't figure out what it was so she went and drew it on the computer program to get the cutting measurements and then look how on the right hand side uh, there's a uh, even a, another thing that 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 has been done and so what I want to show you is in the book that is actually baby bunting it's number six baby bunting it looks very much like a basket and honestly that's what kind of inspired me for the next quilt that we're going to get into all right so let's go on uh, alicia said oh by the way alicia thank you for using whatever you're using for your design wall it looks like you put up the back side of a picnic um tablecloth with the fuzzy stuff so anyways static in the background you know what that is that's my computer that noise Oof, that's not good if that's what you guys are hearing um it's it's hot is what it is so anyways she's putting them up and she said some of these color combinations she would not have ordinarily used but she said the color wheel doesn't lie and you're right you're right the color wheel does not lie and I'm telling you, I'm putting together combinations that I normally would not put together. It's just super awesome. Okay, here's Lori's. Okay, we looked at Lori's last week. Uh, she, uh, this caught my attention. Upper left corner, move one to the right. That's what you put, Lori put up. And again, I'm not playing favorites, guys. I'm just going down. I'm just going down the list. And I love the fact that you're putting the brassica up and you're pinning on top. I usually do not cut into it till I have a pretty solid plan. Okay, then this is Mickey's. Mickey's is growing. And see, that's where this color blocking, I'm thinking, is just so elegant. And my guess is, is that Mickey is leaving those other empties for the, the blocks we're going to do. But when I was looking at this, I was studying it. If you go down to the second row of pieced blocks, there's that friendship star that runs across. And then you skip a row and then go down and there's another row of the friendship stars that run across. I think this is a very interesting set and, and it to me gives it um, probably more continuity than mine. Let's see what BS down, okay. What she wrote, by the way, that's the color of my living room, or my family room wall. Um, what she liked is that there are some in here that she doesn't really care for. And I could probably guess which ones, but I'm not going to say it out loud. Doesn't matter. It absolutely doesn't matter. Keep going. When you only have a few blocks, there are going to be some that completely distract you. Like this one, too, going that one, that one there. I really hate that block. I mean, I don't just like it. I think it's Uggs to the 10th degree. But you know what? When you put it all up there, it's fine. It's absolutely fine. So the more the merrier. That's why I love scrap quilts. And in a sense, this is a solid scrap quilt. It's because if you made a whole quilt out of that, you'd go, oh my gosh, forget it, you know, of that thing, uh, that way. But if it's just the one in there, who cares? Let's see who we have. We have Kathleen. Um, this, she's going to, I think, put more black in. And if you look at this uh, brassica, there is black in it, which I think I didn't really read its clues that carefully. But the one on the right is the one that's really very interesting to me because I would have never picked those fabric combinations. I mean, ever. But using Cave's um, fabric as the guide, it's fabulous. It's fabulous. The color to me that would be very hard to work in would be that green, that brown green. But look, it's, it's just stunning. And so what we're doing is we're letting the designer do our color play and our color work for us as well as the color wheel. So yay for that. I mean, I've always loved the color wheel, but this whole thing has taken me to a whole new level. Me personally, I've been doing this 40 something years. So uh, by the way, John, I, I'm 
this is all live. There's no video. So John will be making notes if you guys have questions and then bring them in to me. He had to, he was going to go to the chiropractor. Well, he's going to go. And I said, just please wait till we're done here. So let's take a look at the star of hope that we're doing here. Get over here. Camera, phone. There we go. This is a very, very little precious star. In your book, it is, I had it. Remember, these are all in alphabetical order. Star of Hope, it is page 91. Oh, okay, 91 or it's number 91, it's page 103, okay? So, here we go. Oh, my phone is ringing. Go away, that message. <laughs> so, here are the colors I picked. I made this quite a while ago. And I got out um, uh, Katie Fowler's block tool, and I thought, I wonder what I did. At that point, I was probably using Cave's Fabric as my uh, color detective. But I got out the color wheel and I thought, okay, these are analogous, all right, so what's this all about? And I realized what I have going on here is a split complementary, all right? So there it is, right there. I could have done this with using Caves Fabric as well as using Katie's color wheel. And you can get these at thequiltshow.com, the color wheel. However, I need to say something real quick, quick, quick about that. Um, I think I said it Friday, but I'm going to reiterate it. TQS is completely up and open for business, except the store we're shutting down this week just to give Suzanne huh, the warehouse. The, not a store. Oh, my God. We don't have a store. Sorry. The warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> we don't have a store. Um, the warehouse just because Suzanne needed a break. I, I get it. I mean, she has been burning the midnight night oil. We're kind of between two projects. However, if there's something you want, go buy it because then that will get you in the pecking order for when she comes back next week. Okay. And then Julie, who works in the warehouse, we have her busy cutting fabric and stuff like that. So John has a question. When pressing flying geese, do you press away from the point or to the point? Oh, I don't know. I've got to be doing that. Okay, when I press, I press the way it tells me to press, which is not an answer. It depends on the fabric you're using. It depends on how many seams are going against that point. So I assess where it's going, and then I do that. John, I'm going to answer questions at the end, okay? Because it, it, okay, He's, but you're, due, you're you're taking notes. That's good. Thank you. So I want to look at... Oh, I want to get so you can look at it with me. That would be good. My phone. Okay, so let's take a look at this. We So we're going to concentrate on shapes and pressing. Because, guys, this is just a nine patch. I know you can figure that out. We've, we've done pinning. We've done all of that. Right in here, if this is a nine patch, and let's say you don't have this book, okay, and I know I want it to finish six inches, all right? So I know that this is finishes at two inches, two inches, two inches. So for a square, I would add a half an inch to it. So I would cut these at two and a half, okay? But now over here, we have a couple things. We have these different triangles going on. I always want the triangle, the edge, to be on the straight of grain. So this right here is a quarter square triangle, and that is when I take a square and then I cut it corner to corner twice. So what is the magic number? The magic number is you take the finished measurement, which is two, and then you add one and a quarter to it. So I cut this at three and a quarter. So let's just cut this up right now in my palatial studio where I'm working, the space. Okay, so I'm gonna go like this, and then I'm gonna turn it. Oh, it didn't cut, how about that? Time for a new blade. 
Why do we do that? I mean, I get my blades for free. Why do I not change the blade? Out of laziness or something. And then you change the blade, and then it's cutting all funny, and that's because you've put two blades on instead of one because they're stuck together with oil. I know you know what I'm talking about. So here is a quarter square triangle. That is the piece that's going to go right there. That is on the straight of grain. This is on the bias. This is on the bias. This too is going to be a quarter square triangle, the purple. together. There's that big long bias. Oops. Okay. So now we have this and then we have this. So these are on straight of grain. This is the long bias. Now I want this part on straight of grain, so what I'm going to cut is a half square triangle. The measurement for a half square triangle is the finished size here, which is two inches, plus seven eighths. So here I've cut this at two and seven eighths. Three and a quarter or three and one quarter? Three and one quarter, three and one quarter. you add one and a quarter. Yeah. No. So this one, this one, you add one and a three. You add one and a quarter to it. So if this is finishes at two, you cut it at three and a quarter. And you guys, if you don't know these numbers, watch this again. Make notes because this is pivotal in setting you free. Okay. So this is finished at two. So I cut this at two and seven eighths. The magic number here is seven eighths. Now remember, I flunk geometry, and I still can do this. Once it's tattooed into your brain, you'll, you'll never forget them. Okay, there we go. So now, here's what we have going on here. Yes, that works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this to this. And I always lay my blocks out because it would be real easy to flip it and sew it in the wrong direction. And then when it, then if you had to pick it out, you're gonna be crying because you're gonna stretch your biases. Put a little bit of that glue on it. And yes, acorn glue works well too. People have asked me that. Boy, that looks like I cut something wrong. I mean, I, I know, I, I'm sure I did. <laughs> That's not good. But this is about pressing, so I'm not going to care so much. But when I see something like that, I will go back and measure and say, what the heck is going on? Because I should not be seeing white on this side. So I'm going to sew in. I'm going to sew that little piece. You don't need to see me sew. All right, so when I open this up here, this is all exposed bias. I handle it with the utmost care. The other thing is when I go to press it, which I'm going to write down here, is this right here, the iron will never ever touch, ever until it's sewn to the next piece. I think that quilt makers, Look, at, look how I'm coming up. Oh, shoot. Coming up. Coming off. I think a lot of quilt makers go like this and like this. And then what's going to happen is everything is going to stretch like there's no tomorrow. Okay. Now, this goes to here. That's fitting together nicely. I'm going to put a little bit of glue there. I discovered this glue trip, but, trick by myself when we were doing uh, this um, Sequoia Sampler. Okay, I'm gonna go now and I'm going to sew from here to here. 
on both sides there are biases so you do not pull it through you do not anything you just let the machine feed it in by itself it doesn't need any encouragement from you And the thing is, is if I did sew this wrong, I probably would just throw it away and start over because to pick it out is just gonna be a monumental mess, a complete mess. Let's do this. All right. There you go. Now, it's all straight of grain on the outside edge and so you can now press all you want. I don't care what you do. You can put your best press on. You can put your flatter on. You can do whatever you want, and you are good to go. And so truly, the success of this little Star of Hope is in the cutting, the stitching, and the pressing with extreme, extreme caution, okay? So, John, do you have some notes for me? I heard his little, um, yeah, uh, Carla said she's been doing this glue trick since I told you guys about it. And I know, I, I, I just made it up on the fly. And yay, there you go. I wonder if you can see all these kinds. I hope not. So, let's see. I know John brought in something. Lion geese. Hold on. He brought some notes over here. I scared him to death. Oh, I'm from a retired eye doctor. Please strengthen your glasses. Straighten. Straighten? Oh, like this or something. <laughs> Is that how you want me to wear them? <laughs> so remember, hi, I'm Alex Anderson. <laughs> so you guys, um, on Wednesday, I'm not sure what block we're going to do, but I do want to tell you that when we switch to the next the next quilt, I'm going to be doing it two, two times a week, and I'll tell you why. S there are so many repetitive things in basket making that I can teach you a couple times and then it carries through, but some of the baskets are take a lot of time, and I don't want you rushing through them. So I haven't quite figured out what to do, what timing. i got to talk to Ricky because he's trying to figure out what to do with his Lizzie Albright sampler and all that, but we got a while to go on this, so no, no big deal. And, I, and I've got to start putting in-betweeners in with my, in with my uh, blocks. And so let me th see if there's any other assignment I can give you besides star hope. Hope, 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 hope. Yeah, the problem is I don't know their names. Shoot, I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you more um, homework on Wednesday because you've got the chops to be able to do all this stuff now. And... Let's see. Oh, the other thing I want to talk about was I was talking to Cindy Needham, and she uses polyester thread in her bobbin too, maybe even silk. But when you're using your 80 poly in your bobbin, it not only makes things so that they uh, are better unions in as much as you don't have as much goof when you roll over and press and all that, but also keeps your bobbin case super, super clean. What? I'm, Welcome back to America. Here. Um, what are the fabric requirements for the basket quilt? I don't know yet, you guys. I don't know. Um, because I'm still making it. And just like with this cave stuff, you'll have extras of some. If, if you buy our kit, you'll have extras of some and not extras of other. Um, I will tell you what's in the kit as soon as I know what's in the kit. I mean, we haven't even gotten the fabric yet. All right? So we're into that whole thing again. Did you want to say something, John? Mm -hmm. No, I'll talk about that later. Well, well, no, John said this. Okay, what I'm, yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm pretty sure I'm going to do quarters, uh, quarter square triangles like I just showed you. So if this finishes at six, I'd be cutting these at seven and a quarter, and then boom, boom, okay? But I'm thinking, and I did this before we did uh, taping here. I had a big star here and a big star over here somewhere. And then the rest was just all jumbled up. It was kind of like it was a, a big fat, it was hidden. You, you're like going, I don't see this star. 
I see the stars. So I've got to play with that because I thought that was onto something really cool too. So how many solid blocks should we make? Yolanda, you can make whatever you want to make. I John wanted me to make a queen size bed and I'm a quilt. I'm like, that's nah, not gonna happen. Make as many as you want. Um, I'm I am kind of a 60 inch girl. That's between 40, 40, 44 and 60. That's kind of where my quilts fall because they're primarily for wall use. So um, if you want a larger quilt, start doubling up blocks, pick other six inch blocks in this in this darling book. Um, and oh, also when we do the uh, basket quilts, you aren't gonna have to buy another book. And also you don't have to buy a kit, you guys. I'm just here to teach you. You can go to your scraps and do whatever you want to do. So I did a pretty good little lecture on scrap quilts back a little bit while we were waiting for this to get started. You might wanna go look at that. And um, okay, so I think we're good. I'm on my way to um, go find out how a part um, my Bernina fell off on the inside and where it goes and why it still runs. <laughs> it's, it's a good machine. <laughs> so you guys take care. Have a great day. Uh, stay cool. I've heard from a lot of you. It's super, super hot. And I will see you Wednesday. Have a good one.